What if I told you some of the stuff you grew up loving on motorcycles is quietly disappearing? Not because riders stopped liking it, but because regulators basically banned it out of existence. By 2025, a whole list of normal bike features either can't be sold on new machines in many markets or are so restricted that manufacturers gave up on them. Carburetors, raw sounding pipes, simple wiring, even old school dashboards are being pushed off the road and replaced with cleaner, smarter, sometimes more annoying tech. Some of these changes make sense. Some feel like overkill. All of them are reshaping what it means to own a bike. And if you're shopping for a new motorcycle now, you might be shocked to see what's missing. So let's go through 11 motorcycle features that are basically banned in 2025 and what's quietly taking their place. Just wait until you see what they did to two strokes. Feature one, carburetors on new street bikes. For decades, carburetors were the heart of the bike. You tuned with a screwdriver, listened with your ears, and felt with your right hand. But to emissions regulators, carbs are a nightmare. They're simple, yes, but they're also dirty and imprecise compared to modern systems. Many countries have tightened emissions so much that carbureted engines on new road bikes are effectively gone. Instead, you get fuel injection on almost everything. Sensors watch air temperature, throttle position, engine speed, and feed it all to an ECU that adjusts fuel in milliseconds. That means cleaner exhaust, better cold starts, and less drama at inspection time. The trade-off, you can't just swap jets under a tree anymore. Tuning now lives inside a black box controlled by software. And that black box is about to get even stricter when we talk about Euro 5 Plus and OBD rules. Feature two, road legal two-stroke engines. Ask any old school rider what they miss most and you'll hear the same thing. The scream and smell of two strokes, lightweight, brutal power bands, and a personality four strokes rarely match. But two-stroke street bikes burn oil by design, and that smoke doesn't make regulators happy. In places like India and major cities around the world, production of two-stroke bikes has been phased out, and many urban areas heavily restrict or outright ban them on daily roads. What replaces them? Cleaner four-stroke engines with precise fuel injection, catalytic converters, and strict emissions maps. On the fringe, electric bikes are beginning to stand in for the crazy punch that two-strokes used to offer. They deliver instant torque, zero tailpipe emissions, and fit perfectly into low-emission zones. The sound and chaos are gone, but the idea of small bike, big punch, lives on in a quieter, more regulated way. And that's not the only area where regulators have stepped in. The next target was your brakes. Feature three, big bikes without ABS. There was a time when ABS on a motorcycle was a luxury or an option. Today, in many regions, it's basically the price of entry. Europe, India, Brazil, Japan, Australia, and others either already mandate ABS or a combined braking system on most new motorcycles over a certain size. New rules announced for 2025 and beyond keep pushing this worldwide. The replacement is obvious, ABS on almost everything and often traction control to go with it. The logic is simple. A lockup on a bike usually means a crash. ABS cuts that risk by preventing the wheel from freezing under hard braking, especially on wet or dirty roads. You can debate whether riders should have the choice, but manufacturers aren't interested in building two different versions anymore. If they have to fit ABS in one region, that's usually what everyone gets. And as braking systems get smarter, Another old control quietly disappears from the handlebars. Feature four, headlight on off switches. Remember when you could actually ride with your headlight off if you wanted? In a lot of markets, that's not allowed anymore. Safety rules now demand always on lighting or daytime running lights for motorcycles because being seen is half the battle. So the old headlight on off rockers, mostly gone on new models. In their place, you get automatic headlights that turn on with the ignition, sometimes with dedicated DRLs that stay lit even when the main beam is off. You lose a bit of control, but gain visibility and compliance. And with lights being forced to stay on all the time, regulators turn to the next question, if they must be on, how efficient and clean should those lights be? 
that's where your old bulbs ran into trouble. Feature 5. Halogen Headlamps on New Models Incandescent and many types of halogen bulbs have been phased out or banned from sale in big markets like the EU and the US due to efficiency rules. That naturally spills over into motorcycles too. Why fit a halogen lamp that might not even be legal to sell in a few years when LED ticks all the boxes from day one? The replacement is LED everything, LED headlights, indicators, tail lamps, and even fancy cornering lights on high-end bikes. LEDs sip power, last longer, and help manufacturers meet both efficiency and environmental targets. Visually, it looks modern and sharp. Practically, it means fewer dead bulbs and slightly more room in the electrical budget for other gadgets. And those other gadgets are exactly where the next band shows up, hidden deep in your exhaust. Feature 6. Straight Pipe Street Exhausts that raw, open-pipe sound might feel pure, but noise and emissions laws see it very differently. Between modern noise limits and emission standards like Euro 5 and Euro 5 Plus, manufacturers can't legally sell new bikes with old-school, free-flowing pipes on public roads. Decap pipes and racing-only cans are heavily restricted, and many regions crack down hard on bikes that fail sound checks. What replaces them is the modern, complex exhaust system, catalytic converters, resonators, precise oxygen sensors, and baffled mufflers tuned for both power and silence. Some even have valves inside that adjust based on RPM and throttle to stay inside legal noise windows while still giving you a bit of bark when allowed. And the result is stock bikes that feel too quiet to some, but keep the neighbors and the inspectors happy. And the same regulators who killed your straight pipe also wanted to know exactly what your engine is doing at all times. Feature 7. Simple ECUs with no onboard diagnostics. Older bikes didn't care if you swapped a pipe, changed filters, or messed with the fueling. There was no electronic tattletale. But modern emission stages don't just limit what comes out of the pipe, they demand that the bike can detect and report problems too. That's why Euro 5 Plus and similar rules bring in more advanced onboard diagnostics closer to the OBD2 style in cars. The era of dumb ECUs on street-legal new bikes is ending. Instead, you get a brain that constantly monitors sensors, logs fault codes, and lights up warning symbols if anything strays from the allowed range. This makes troubleshooting easier for shops and keeps emissions equipment honest, but it also means the bike knows when you start playing with its lungs. And as electronics took over inside the ECU, they started spreading everywhere else. Feature 8. Big air-cooled engines on modern road bikes. Air-cooled engines look right, sound right, and feel mechanical in a way liquid-cooled lumps often don't. The problem is heat control. To meet tough emissions rules, engines need precise temperatures, tighter tolerances, and often higher compression. That's much easier when you have coolant, radiators, and thermostats doing the work. So while small air-cooled singles and simple commuters still hang on in some markets, big air-cooled twins and fours are disappearing from new spec sheets. They struggle to pass the strictest emissions tests without sacrificing power or running scorching hot. Their replacement is liquid cooling almost across the board. Radiators, fans, coolant passages, and temperature sensors let the engine run in a very specific zone where emissions are minimized and performance is predictable. Add that to the data from the ECU, and suddenly your engine is managed like a little lab experiment. The lab doesn't stop at the engine either. It now lives in your dashboard. Feature 9. Pure Analog Dashboards with No Smart Display Once upon a time, two round gauges and a few idiot lights were all you got. Speed, revs, maybe a fuel gauge, and that was enough. Today, new regulations and modern electronics want more warning symbols, detailed fault indicators, and visibility for all those systems we just talked about. That's why analog-only dashboards are fading fast on new mid-range and premium bikes. In their place, you get LCD or full-color TFT displays that can show ABS status, traction control modes, service reminders, and engine error codes. Some even offer Bluetooth, navigation, and ride-by-ride -ride logs. It's overkill for riders who just want to know how fast they're going, but it keeps regulators and manufacturers aligned on safety and diagnostics. And with that screen in place, one more old-school mechanical part was next in line, your throttle cable. Feature 10. 
pure cable throttles on high-end bikes. Twisting a throttle used to mean one thing, a cable pulling a butterfly valve open. Direct, simple, and easy to understand. But try adding traction control, multiple riding modes, cruise control, and emissions maps to that system, and it starts to fall apart. So, on many modern high-end bikes, pure cable throttles are gone, replaced by ride-by-wire. Your wrist sends an electrical signal to the ECU, which decides how far to open the throttles based on mode, traction, lean angle, and even gear. The upside is precision and safety features that would be impossible with a simple cable. The downside is more dependence on electronics, and one more reminder that the bike is in charge as much as you are. And that brings us to the last quiet ban shaping how bikes are built. Feature 11. Tune whatever you want street bikes. In the past, you could slap on a pipe, rejet or tweak a carb, maybe advance the timing and ride off. As long as it ran, nobody cared much. Today, emission zones, inspection programs and digital ECUs mean that free-for-all tuning is having its last stand on new bikes. Many cities test emissions. Some regions plug into your diagnostic port during inspection. Manufacturers lock down ECUs to prevent tampering, and any obvious removal of catalytic converters or emissions hardware can fail your bike on the spot. The replacement isn't as romantic. Official ECU flashes, certified performance parts, and tunes designed to stay inside legal maps. There's still room to modify, but it has to play nicely with the systems watching over the bike. What we lose and what we gain. So by 2025, a big chunk of the old motorcycle feel is either banned on new bikes, heavily restricted, or squeezed out by the combination of emissions, safety, and efficiency rules. Carburetors, raw two-strokes, non-ABS big bikes, simple switches, halogen lamps, wild exhausts, dumb ECUs, big air-cooled engines, analog clocks, cable throttles, and Wild West tuning are all giving way to cleaner, smarter, more controlled machines. We lose a certain rough mechanical charm. We lose the simplicity of fixing everything with basic tools and a good ear. But we gain bikes that start in any weather, stop harder, crash less, pollute less, and can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with cars on safety tech. The real question isn't whether these bands are good or bad, it's what riders do with the new world they create. Some will hunt down and protect the old dinosaurs, Others will embrace the tech and squeeze every drop of fun out of it. Either way, the motorcycle of 2025 is not the motorcycle of 1995, and knowing what's been banned and what replaced it is the first step to deciding which future you want to ride into.